Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Another tragedy born of desperation, at least 13 people, seven of them children. Actually, now the number is actually 10. They drowned off the Greek coast when their boat capsized as they tried to reach European shores. Despite the wintry weather, hundreds of refugees are still making the risky journey by sea. Thousands have lost their lives in the attempt. Now, the father of the little boy, whose death sparked a public outcry, has appealed to the world for help. Fatima Manji has this report. The usual alert to the ferry docks is a warning sound. For these refugees and migrants, though, it's a signal of safety. What you can't hear is the sighs of relief, that they have made it to the shores of mainland Europe. 1,400 people arrived into the Greek port of Piraeus this morning, at least half of them fleeing the Syrian war. We want to end the war in Syria. The people have had a rough time and lost everything. They've lost their lives, their families. Some have had fathers and brothers killed. The cold weather hasn't stopped the crossings. The International Organization for Migration estimates over the year one million people have turned up at EU borders, mainly by sea from Turkey to Greece. Even now, the death toll is rising. Yesterday, 11 deaths, today, 13, most of them children. These scenes were supposed to stop when the world was outraged at seeing the lifeless body of a three-year-old refugee drowned on a Turkish beach. Aylan Kurdi's image became a symbol of the crisis. Now his father, in Channel 4's alternative Christmas message, makes this plea. <laughs> But the idea of opening up the doors of Europe has been politically divisive. As Germany encouraged Syrian refugees, other countries put up fences and strengthened border controls. Hungary and Slovakia are now taking legal action to challenge EU plans for sharing out asylum seekers. And despite calls for Europe to provide safer routes to stop the drowning, the crisis continues. That resolution to the war remains for now just a hope. In the meantime, record numbers continue into Europe, not just from Syria. And while the EU grapples with the political ramifications, it's refugee and migrant families who bear the true cost of the crisis. Fatima Manji reporting with me now, Kirsty McNeil, Campaigns Director at Save the Children. She's recently returned from a trip to the refugee camps on Lesbos. And I'm wondering the extent to which, even in the couple of weeks since you've been back, how the situation is now changing. Well, the situation for refugees in Europe has got even colder and more inhospitable. So when I was there, people didn't have adequate shelter, they didn't have adequate sanitation facilities, and now they have to cope with bitter temperatures and rain too. Now you've got a team of some 20 there uh, on the island, what are they able to do? So when we get refugees off boats, we make sure they have access to the medical uh, care that they need. We get them food. Some of them have been adrift. For example, the ones coming into Italy have sometimes been adrift for days before they land. On Lesbos, we're providing hot food, sometimes the only cooked food that people have had all day. So on Lesbos, it's 8,000 meals a day. Across Greece, it's 150,000 we're able to provide. In a, in a macabre kind of a way, your, your organisation, Save the Children, is almost best able to chart what's going on right away the long line. Yes, yeah, so we help child refugees the whole way along their journey. So we're active in Syria, its surrounding countries, the so countries people are fleeing from, the countries that they flee to, and then right the way along the route that a child refugee would take through Europe. We're there doing whatever it takes. Now, is to there them. any sense in which there is any kind of... I mean, this, you're, after all, a non-governmental organisation. What about Europe itself? Is it doing anything? 
So the European public's been far ahead of the European politicians on this, unfortunately. So there's been a squabble across European countries about who should do what. And actually, we've seen the public step in while their politicians are still fighting to offer up their homes and their hearts to European refugees this Christmas. To what extent is the uprating of the bombing campaign against uh, Syria, against the ISIS in Syria and indeed against other groups in Syria, to what extent is that pushing more people out now? Well, we've seen people fleeing all year, actually. We thought as the winter came and the seas got more dangerous that we'd see fewer people coming. But actually, they'd be coming four times as many people this year as last year. But we've seen that pretty consistently throughout the year. The people are fleeing Syria for the same reasons that you or I would. They want to keep their children safe when there's bombings taking place in schools and all across neighbourhoods. Any parent would do the same. What needs to be done above all? So the thing that UK government could do straight away is take some of the unaccompanied children who are already in Europe. 11,000 children have landed in Italy completely on their own without a mum or dad to look after them. And they're running across Europe with no one to give them protection this Christmas. The UK government could take some of them in a heartbeat this Christmas. Kirsten McNeil, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I've been